Hey everybody, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening whenever you're watching this video. Today I'm going to talk about the social issues of the 1980s. In the 1980s there were several concerns that a lot of Americans had in the country, concerns about problems in the country. The main categories that I'm going to discuss are problems in health, education, and cities. Starting off with the health issues. A lot of Americans believed that AIDS, the acquired immune deficiency syndrome, was a problem in America. AIDS, in case you don't know, is a disease caused by a virus, and the disease destroys the human immune system. It makes the body prone to infections. That means you get more infections and uh, more prone to things like cancer, for example. In the 1980s, the AIDS epidemic was growing. More and more people were getting AIDS. And there was an increased concern from a lot of Americans uh, over the prevention of AIDS. So what methods can we use to prevent it? And what could we possibly use for a cure? Is there ever going to be a cure? That, that was the main concern that a lot of Americans had. Abortion was also a main issue that a lot of Americans were focusing on. Especially in the 1980s, the battle over abortion was intensifying. That means more and more people that were against it, pro-life people, were voicing their opinion and more supporters or pro-choice people were supporting and voicing their opinion uh, on the abortion issue. By 1989, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that states may place certain restrictions on abortion. Things, for example, like you can't get an abortion after the first trimester, things like that. Continuing on in these issues, there were issues that Americans were worried about, like drug abuse, for example. The Reagan administration actually started to prosecute drug users and dealers very heavily during this time to try and discourage drug use. And First Lady Nancy Reagan had even started her own program called the Just Say No campaign. Uh, the Just Say No campaign went to schools, for example, schools like mine when I was a kid, and uh, the representatives there were talking to students about why drug use is something that they should resist. Education was also an important issue for a lot of Americans, and by 1983, the U.S. government set a commission or a group to investigate uh, why U.S. students were lagging behind students in other nations, and they found a few conclusions. Uh, for example, students in America were not getting enough, according to that commission, enough math education, and so the commission recommended some initiatives, and President Bush uh, used uh, one of those initiatives for, to call for using public money for school choice. In other words, he wanted to encourage parents to send their own children to different schools if the school that was in their neighborhood was not cutting it, was not enough. In cities, there was a crisis, and a lot of Americans decided to leave cities, especially white Americans. So as they're deteriorating, as they're falling apart, uh, more and more whites are leaving and more and more businesses are leaving. And by 1992, there were riots in L.A. that caused a lot of disturbances after officers were taped beating Rodney King uh, that were taped to beating Rodney King were acquitted of the crime of using excessive force. So here's a picture of First Lady Nancy Reagan with her Just Say No program and here's part of that campaign called the DARE or Drug Abuse Resistance Education Program and these are the kinds of uh, programs that went to schools like mine when I was a, a kid. This is a photograph showing the video screenshot of the police beating Rodney King here on the ground after this incident and their acquittal a lot of Americans in LA decided to protest and those protests eventually turned into riots violent riots there was a struggle with equal rights as well that means a lot of groups were claiming that they did not receive equal treatment so they were more active and more opinionated and there were some political losses and some gains in this area for example, the ERA, or Equal Rights Amendment, was not ratified by 1982. But President Reagan did name two women to the cabinet in 1983. So there was a gain there. By 1992, there was an increased number of women that were elected to U.S. Congress as well. More and more women are in politics. But there was still an issue with inequality that a lot of Americans didn't like. Uh, women in general earned less than men. 31% of female heads of household were still poor. Uh, there was an issue with pay equity, which means the uh, reflection of education, physical effort, and responsibility in your pay. The more you have these things, for example, the more you should get paid. But women were seeking that pay equity, and they were also seeking family benefits, things like time off, for example, for your children, uh, to take care of your children. Uh, there were some employers that complied during this time, 
but Ronald Reagan cut budgets for programs like daycare and other similar programs that were designed to help women who worked. So a lot of women were dissatisfied with that aspect. The fight for rights kept on going, and African Americans were also very vocal about their issues. And by the mid-1980s, many cities actually had African American mayors. So that was one advancement. Uh, numerous communities elected blacks to local uh, state office and Congress, the federal level government. L. Douglas Wilder of Virginia was the first African American governor, for example. And Reverend Jesse Jackson w ran for the Democratic presidential do nomination during this time as well. Middle class blacks held professional and managerial positions. That means they held higher positions in employment, blue collar positions. And the Supreme Court limited affirmative action programs, which actually hurt a lot of minorities like black people. Affirmative action programs are programs designed to give more minorities opportunities, especially in, in areas like education. Here is Mr. Wilder and here's uh, Reverend Jesse Jackson. There were a lot of Latinos who also joined in on this call for equality and Latinos were the fastest growing minority at the time. Some states elected Latino governors. Uh, Reagan appointed Laura, Lauro Cavazos as the Secretary of Education. And Bush Sr. named Dr. Antonia Coelho Novello as the Surgeon General, which is the highest medical office in our country. From 1968, bilingual education was available to Latinos. But by the mid-1980s, there was opposition from white people, especially white parents who did not want bilingual education to be a program that they had to fund with their tax money. Native Americans also spoke out during this time, and Reagan did cut aid to Native Americans for health programs, education programs, and other social services. So a lot of them were dissatisfied and unhappy with that. And many tribes during this time opened up casinos to bring in additional funding for their communities. So this is Mr. Cavazos and Dr. Antonia Cuelanovello, the Surgeon General. So the final section that we're going to discuss here is the Asian American population and their fight for rights. Asian Americans were the second fastest growing minority at this time. And often white people use them as an example of a successful minority. They were often called the model minority. But Asians in America still had high levels of unemployment and they were still generally very poor. The gay rights movement also advanced during this time and a lot of homosexual people had uh, received a lot of setbacks from conservative groups. Conservative groups did not like the gay community and they often blamed the AIDS epidemic on the gay community. By the late 1980s, there was a new surge of activism from the gay rights community, and a lot of them were calling for an end to discrimination because they believed discrimination was a big problem, especially in employment and education. So a lot of them were out there protesting and expressing their, their concerns. Some states and some communities did comply and they outlawed discrimination, but it took a lot of effort from the gay rights community. A lot of them even were labeled often as mentally ill by the states, so they fought really hard to get organizations like the American Psychological Association to stop calling homosexuality a mental illness during this time. So these are some of the concerns that a lot of Americans had at the time. So remember, these are social issues, and a lot of Americans decided to voice their opinion about the problems that they were seeing in their society at this time. I hope you learned something new. Have a good day.